Hi, thanks for joining me. So SpeedyB asked me to do a review of their adapter 3 and I figured I might as well. My uh, phone's micro like USB port is damaged so I can't uh, plug data cables into it. It still charges but data cables don't work so I thought this might uh, help me bypass the OTG cable that I can't use anymore. I figured I'd see how uh, easy it was to use and if it would help me uh, leave the laptop at home now because since I can't use the OTG cable with my phone I've been dragging the laptop around with me all the time and uh, that's okay if I'm going to the test field but going for long range flights I'd sure like to lose that bit of weight. So it comes with a uh, USB-C and micro USB ports so you just uh, use whichever side of the cable you need for your flight controller and plug into whichever one you need on the other side. So that's kind of handy that the uh, cable does both. Alright, let's give it a try and see how uh, see how easy this is to use. So I've plugged in my LiPo, it's telling me the voltage of my LiPo. Plugged in the flight controller now. So now it's got a flashing red light. I think that's a Bluetooth light. So let's check if the Bluetooth thing. <laughs> okay, found the adapter thing. So I click to connect. Well, that was pretty, uh, pretty easy. Oh, so some of the uh, parameters are moved around just to fit them on this screen size. But it uh, seems to all be here. It's got all the sliders here for the PID settings. I haven't actually used this app in a while because my, uh, my OTG cable has been broken, so... It's, uh, it's looking a lot better than it used to. This looks like this should be uh, all you need for doing, you know, just updating some filters or changing a few PIDs at the field. It's nice and it grays out all the ones you're not using. That's, uh, that's pretty good. Now let's see now with this quad, because this one's got a different flight controller. The flight controller uh, also powers the GPS and the receiver. So, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I just want to double check. I think I can plug this in and let my quad find satellites. Yeah, there the, uh, the GPS is powered because this is a, a knife flight um, twin G flight controller. So it powers the GPS and yeah, and there's the power. It powers the receiver as well. Yeah, so you could just plug this in and find satellites so you don't have to use your actual flight battery. You can just use whatever LiPo you got sitting around, like a leftover one from another flight, as long as it's not totally dead. You just need a little bit of power, like three, four hundred milliamp hours at success should easily be enough to get you your uh, satellites found. And it's just out of interest to uh, try connecting to to this one. That was even faster. Well, it looks like you can even do uh, test your motor directions. And if you're using Behel SCSCs, you can um, you can change the motor direction in the Behel BL S configurator. So that all seems to work work nicely. Let's take a look at. Uh, a couple of the other things that this does. 
All right, so one of the other features I wanted to uh, cover here was the black box. So unfortunately, I have uh, a Samsung A5, I think it is. So it's it's like four or five years old. So the Wi-Fi stuff doesn't seem to work on this because it's running Android version 8. Uh, on Joshua Bardwell and RC Shim's videos that I watched, it looked like they, I think they were using pretty new looking phones, so they're probably on Android 10. And it seems like all the Wi-Fi functions work just fine on the Android 10 devices. Same as on the iOS devices. I'll show you here how it's, it, it's pretty easy and straightforward. Uh, all right, I'll plug this, uh, plug this in first. And click on the black box option here. So I can import from local off the, uh, off the storage of the, the iPad here or import from flight controller. All right, so you can see it's got 32 megabyte storage and it's only got a 1.8 megabyte file. That's because I haven't been able to get out and fly because it's been pouring rain for weeks here. So I just armed my quad and shook it in the air basically to create a fake black box file just so I could uh, check it here. All right, it shows two of them there. Just click on it and it starts loading it. From what I saw from uh, RC Shim and Joshua Bardwell's videos, it seemed like their Android devices loaded this up uh, just as easily as, as I did here with the, uh, the iPad. All right, and of course the traces look all weird because it's uh, it's just me shaking the quad. It's not actually a flight. Uh, there are a bunch of different settings for what you can view. Uh, the motor traces, the gyros, you know, all the usual things, PIDs. Uh, one of the things that I found most interesting about it is that you can look at the debug. So when you have your debug set to gyro scaled, you can look at the gyro scaled data. And the one catch with the iOS version is that it doesn't have this one cool feature that I'll uh, show you that is available on the Android devices. Uh, SpeedyB has told me that this feature will be available on the iOS devices in a future update. Let's uh, jump over to the Android device now and I'll show you that cool feature, but I'll have to show it to you in the demo mode since my Wi-Fi for the Android 8 doesn't work. Alright, so this box up here is where you get the selection for other things. Go to Black Box Analyzer. And normally load from flight controller would work if you're on an iOS device or if you're using Android 10. Uh, I believe they're, they're working on getting it to work with Android uh, earlier Android versions. But uh, we'll just take a look in the demo here for now. So you can actually look at uh, the analyzer display and you can set it to debug. So you can actually look at your gyro scale data in the uh, analyzer or waterfall chart here. I think that's, uh, that's a pretty good feature for this because now you can, you can tune your filters really accurately without having to uh, have your laptop there to look at the to look at this. You can just look at it right on your phone or your iPad. One of the other things I wanted to check out about it was the uh, charging feature because it also acts as a USB power bank. Well, it uses your, uh, your LiPo to output USB power. I don't think we need to use any of this. Let's just plug that in there. So let's see here. My LiPo plugged in. So of course it's also a, a battery checker. It doesn't give you a balance connection reading, but it tells you the 
voltage. This is only a 5S, so that's why it's only at 21. Oh yeah, so when I plug it in, the light turns on. I think uh, whether it stays on solid or flashes tells you how much uh, power output it's, uh, it's doing through the USB port. And I believe, oh, there's no Bluetooth or anything thing lit up on it, but I believe press Bluetooth and this lightning button. There you go, and it's giving us uh, the output settings for this, uh, for the power that's charging. It's charging at four watts. It's not charging very high because this thing is uh, 98% full, so I think it's doing a lower power charge. And you can change the battery low voltage per cell alarm. I guess in case the uh, voltage reading goes off, you can change the voltage scale. That's kind of neat. That seems to work. And you can see the power is going down now as it's, it's getting fuller. So it's drawing less power, but it does do, um, the, like the new fast charging for iPhones and Android devices. So it will charge stuff pretty quickly. Well, if you don't have an OTG cable already, then it's probably worthwhile just uh, getting one of these instead because you can uh, skip skip also buying a USB charging thing. So it's pretty handy to have for uh, charging your GoPro batteries. I think that's now I can uh, skip bringing this power bank with me and uh, just bring this and use my the flight battery that I just flew to kill my GoPro battery with. I just use the last, because I never kill my batteries entirely, use the last little bit of it to charge up my other GoPro battery, because I always bring uh, two GoPro batteries and use one and charge one. So I always have the GoPro ready to go. Oh, and of course, I forgot to mention, it's also got the PH 2.0 connector. So you can use this to uh, a whoop battery and uh, yeah, get your whoop all set up without needing to have any bigger batteries to power this. So to summarize, if all you're interested in using is the uh, SpeedyB app to change your PIDs and uh, your filter settings, then you might as well just use the OTG cable. But if you're interested in the uh, some of these other cool features, like I think the uh, the power bank thing, being able to use a lipo as a power bank and adjust it for so it doesn't kill your lipo, depending on whether it's a 4S, 5S, 6S, whatever. That's quite a handy feature. And also, if you're interested in the uh, other Wi-Fi features, like the um, BL Heli S ESC updates or uh, updating the firmware over the Wi-Fi, then uh, you need the adapter for that. I'd personally, I would do my my ESC and firmware updates at home on my computer, but I think the Wi-Fi functionality for the black box features is pretty handy, especially if you've got the Android 10 device, uh, then you can use that waterfall graph for the uh, analyzer display. That's that right there kind of sells me on this. And uh, so hopefully they should have that going for the iOS devices and for the, uh, the older Android devices soon. Well, that's all for this video. Thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you on the next one.